Sometimes we all just need to be shown a little kindness. Hey everyone, it's Ryan from 2G1 and welcome to this Based on a Episode 3 Extra. It was a rainy day out in Los Angeles when I talked to John Delancey and we talked some Gen 13. But after we were done, he had a little time because, hey, it was rainy. So we started talking about this and that and I got on the subject of My Little Pony. Talking with John on My Little Pony was very interesting. And I didn't know that he had produced the My Little Pony Brony documentary, which then caused me to bab a little bit. I had worked with this great guy when I was a manager at GameStop a billion years ago, and his name was Adam Hedges. Adam was a brony, and I really didn't understand the brony culture until he handed me the brony documentary. As you'll hear in this clip, Adam was on the cover. Adam was in the film. Adam, Adam loved My Little Pony. He loved a lot of things. He was a geek like me. Gamer. Loved anime, manga. And he passed last year. He was way, way too young. I dedicate this little clip to Adam and his family. And I hope all the little My... And I hope all the My Little Pony fans and bronies out there enjoy. You know, you have one of those voices. And I guess you became well-known to a whole different group, you know, with, with My Little Pony. You could probably have little girls who recognize you just from your voice. Yes. <laughs> and uh, and when they see me, I'm sure they're horrified. Oh. You know? I look like their, their grandfather. I know it because I, they come up to me and, you know, somebody, will, you know, a parent will say, oh, you know, this is Discord. <laughs> you know, the little seven-year-old is looking at me going, like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so, so it's, um, uh, it, it's just, a, it's, it's part of a business, I guess. You know, every time, you know, people have their time in Hollywood and it kind of fade away. And I, I would think that you've worked very hard continuously throughout your career. And I think have been very successful what you're doing. I'm thankful for what, what I've done. Uh, it's, it's fun now because I don't need to work very much uh i can kind of live the life of riley and so when these projects come around i've always taken them seriously but now i can take them seriously and also have fun doing them so something as seemingly as silly as uh, my little pony turned out to be uh, i took it seriously and i turned it into something i made a, a nice documentary about them i don't know do you ever, ever see that documentary i did was it the bronies one yeah, the Brony Con one. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I, I um, yeah, I felt, that documentary really. I don't want to say it a harsh look at like Bronies, but and or I looked down upon them, but I really didn't get it. And I watched that documentary, and it was really like you know I do get it. Everyone has their thing, and if you like football, you know, and then you like baseball, or then you like comic books, like everyone has their thing. And I kind of felt really badly about how I felt about bronies, and it really changed my mind about them. Yeah, well, I went into that not knowing what we were going to be shooting. I really didn't know. I, I was motivated for, for one simple reason, and that is a friend of mine who had suggested doing the documentary, and I went, absolutely not. I have no idea what you know, why 20-year-old guys are watching a cartoon for 8-year-old girls, and I frankly don't want to find out. It stuck in his head, and two weeks later, I was up in Vancouver shooting something, and kids, I mean, 20-year-olds were coming up to me, very polite uh, guys, very polite, and Mr. Delancey, would you please sign? You know, I said, why are you watching this show? And they gave me sort of kind of a, you know, uh, generalized, well, we just think that the message is good or, you know, we love the the colors, of, you know, something like that. But in any case, I thought, uh, I don't know. And my friend, who this idea did not leave him, sent me a, a link and he said, I think you ought to take a look at this. And it was Fox News, which he knew I've never liked. I've always felt that Fox News was a, has done more damage to our country than just about any institution out there it said uh, bronies the latest degradation in our culture bronies are a bunch of homosexuals who live at home on food stamps and disability payments so they can watch cartoons in their parents basement anyway 
done this. And I called him up and I said, we're going to make this. I, I don't know what I'm getting myself into, but we're going to make this documentary because these kids need some cover uh, before they are wiped out by the big mouths on Fox News. And that's how we got into it. Yeah, I had a, I had a, a co-worker who was a brony and he was in the documentary and he was so happy. And um, yeah, even just hearing about this, because he passed on just recently and it's just really sad, but um, he was so happy once I watched that documentary and I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll never I'll never say an ill, Ill word toward a brony again. I really had a an appreciation. So the documentary was, was great. It was really well done. Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of kids who, I, I kept on calling them kids because I am 70 and they were 20. So a lot of kids were saying to me, is this something that I'm going to be able to show my parents? And I understood what they were saying. And that is, is that they were, they were saying, my parents think that because I'm watching this, I'm gay. And the issue was, was not so much of whether it's okay to be gay or not. It was that they felt that their parents were going through, that this was a misunderstanding. And you know, I, I said, yes, yes. I said, I, I, what I pledge to you is that this, this documentary will be um, insightful, for, informative, insightful, and entertaining. And it will be respectfully done. Uh, I wasn't out to, to get anybody. I've run a, a number of productions in my life, and I have never fired anybody. Uh, and this was a production where I had to fire four people, uh, people who were in positions to really change the way in which the film could come out, you know, and, uh, you know, one person was saying, well, you know, this is very much like, like the isolation of Israel and these, these bronies are like, I go, what, what are you talking about? Isn't it enough to just try to figure out why are 20 year old guys watching a cartoon intended for eight year old girls? That's enough. And if we, if we look into that, we will discover something. And I think what we discover is, is that everybody needs, um, to come out from under the sun. Everybody needs a little bit of shade. And I like the fact that, um, my Little Pony is rather secular, and yet they are moral stories. They're cautionary tales, uh, and I think that that's very uh, current for today, where uh, the younger population, I'm happy about this, are becoming more and more secular, uh, and yet, you know, being nice and being loving and being tolerant are still things that that one needs to learn. You just don't need to learn them through the matrix of a, of a religious, through the filter of a religious thing. You can learn them in other ways. So I, I was very happy to be uh, instrumental in giving them some space, as it were. Hopefully people like me got to watch that film and see it through other people's eyes and kind of realize that they were being intolerant by showing their intolerance about what people were watching. I had a dinner for, let's see, two, four, six of our friends. So, so three couples. And, you know, these were, you know, architects, an architecture couple, uh, uh, two doctors and a lawyer. I mean, these were people who, you know, they are not in the business that you and I are in. Uh, and they are not following these trends at all but they had heard that i was working on this so i i said listen you know i'd like you to come over and watch the film at my, at my house and you know it comes with a complimentary dinner and um it was really interesting to hear they left the film uh sort of shaken and they went through the same experience that i went through and that i think everybody goes through and that is is that it takes you right to the edge and you are a little like Oh, uh, I don't, I don't know. I, this is this is the norm here. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at a guy who's talking to me, and he's showing me his painted fingernails, and that tells me one message. And yet he's got this, you know, his beard. And he's talking like this, and he's saying, you know, I can't believe it. 
but uh, a year ago, if somebody told me I was a brony, I would have socked them in the mouth. And, and so it's that fractured thing. And one of them had a son who, who had, they've been having nothing but problems with. And it's because he just doesn't quite fit in. And, and after seeing that film, uh, she said, oh, my God, this gave me such an insight. And it, it was not me watching the film. It was me. It was like it was a mirror. I was looking at myself up there. Uh, and I went, oh, my God, well, that's the that's the best thing that anybody could ever say to, to an artist. You know, it made you look at yourself. So. So, yeah, I'm it, it, it's funny where things come, you know, uh, I had somebody after the Breaking Bad scene, those, those three scenes that I or three episodes I did, a, a kid came up to me and a couple of them actually said uh, it was in an airport or something, or maybe, I don't know, I don't remember where it was. He goes, hey man, are you Jane's father? And I go, yeah. He goes, well, now I know what my parents went through. I went, wow. There he was, a drug addict who hopefully was recovering when he was saying that to me, who could not, could not feel the pain that his parents were going through. And God knows, I'm sure he had been told a, a, a bazillion times by his teachers and parents and what have you, but through the art, through what we do as an art form, he was able to see himself and be touched. So I thought that was great. It's amazing how you as an actor can bring out those performances and continue to touch people. Well, let me tell you, acting is it's one leg of the stool. You have to have the script that does that. This this uh, went in an unexpected turn. I'm really glad it did. It was it was really wonderful just even talking to you about that um that Brony documentary. Uh again, the guy he was such a sweet guy that I worked with, and when he gave me the DVD and he's like, you know, there I am on the cover, and I'm in the movie, and I'm so happy. And he goes, you know, watch it. And I went home and watched it, and I said, you know, I totally think different about you and those who like this show. And um, it was really nice. Again, when he passed away, he was just like 31. It just it was very sudden for him and his family. And um, even just talking passed to you about away. this today is, really? is, uh, is nice. Wow. What did he have? It was some sort of um, something that was quick and sudden, you know, wow. for him and his family. So, but uh, wow, yeah, he terrible. was he was on the cover. So you pull out your your oh, he DVD. Was on the, uh, the cover, our cover. Yeah, he's on the cover. Oh yeah, on the... I, I, yeah. I've, it's like most things. I never look at anything after I've done them. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, well, yeah, I don't even have the cover in my head i don't even know if i have a copy of the show it, it made um, him happy and it made him happy to be a part of that so even yeah, that tiny yeah. tiny little bit brought happiness to someone yeah. out there thank okay. you again john um enjoy the rain out there this week you know i heard there's a lot oh a lot God. coming yeah it's fantastic all right talk to you later all right john bye-bye